Hey, today we're going to be looking at making doors which slide open and closed. Think of like grocery store doors, automatic doors, etc., stuff like that, using only components and using Collider User Tracker. When I published my original video on Collider User Tracker, which just covered culling, I'll link that in the video description, Shifty um, messaged me and said that they'd created some doors using Collider User Tracker and um, asked if I could cover them. They sent me the doors, and so thank you for this idea, Shifty, it's really good. I'm going to go ahead and show the doors that Shifty sent as an example of what we're building, but then build them. We'll also be building them in a slightly different way to the way that Shifty has built them using a new component that was added after Shifty had built them, which is called Smooth Value. I just did a video on that, that's also linked in the video description. The Smooth Value tutorial is just behind me, sometimes they do them in batches. Let's hop here into Smooth POV. So if I'm in Walk Run, which I am in, and I approach these doors, you'll see that they open, I can go through them, and then they'll close. Pretty much automatic doors. I know that they don't look pretty, and I know that we don't have a you know a supermarket set up or anything like that for, for you to take a look at them, but they are functionally great. So let's go ahead and take a look at rebuilding these using uh, Shifty's uh, idea. So first of all, we're going to need a door. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab a developer tooltip. This should be all you need today. Um, go to the create new menu, go to 3D model box. This will create a box which has this gizmo on it that allows us to resize it. There's more information on gizmos provided in a video called gizmos or about gizmos that I'll link in the video description. I'm going to make this thin so it's a bit like a door. We'll make it tall so it's about the sort of size of me. Let's go taller. Looks good. Let me make it thin again. Sometimes the gizmos will sort of override each other. And um, we should probably go a little bit thinner. There we go. That looks good. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just an example. Once that's done, let's go ahead and inspect it. So point my uh, developer tool to bat it and hit secondary. And then go to open inspector here. And you'll see that we've got a nice inspector here with all of the properties available. First thing we're going to do is remove the grabable property from it. This is just so we can't we can't move it now. And I'm also going to go to the box collider here and set character collider on. This means I can't walk through it. If you'd like to more, more information about colliders, check my collider tutorial series. That's also linked in the video description. Now we need to set it up such that when we approach this door, and we'll just do one side because then we can just close it, uh, clone it for the other side, it will slide out of the way, and then when we leave it, it will return to its starting position. The easiest way to do this is to set its position in stone, such that we'd only have to deal with the delta or the difference between the position. So the easiest way to do this here is once the box is selected in the inspector to hit this up arrow, what this does is create a parent object which is located at 1, 1 1.2, 41, and this rotation, but the box beneath it isn't affected by that, and that allows us to move our box separately from the uh, location that the box is at, and this allows us to do that slide. So I'm going to rename this here to uh, door position, and then we'll rename box here to door slide, such that we are clear. So door slide. Now we need this to go between uh, two different uh, two different positions. To do this, we're going to use a Boolean value driver. I do have a video on that, so I'll link it in the video description, and I did just mention it in this Smooth Value video as well. The reason why I did Smooth Value is so I could refer to it from this value uh, video. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we're going to go to Attach Component, Transform, Drivers, Boolean value driver. Once this is selected, make sure you select float3 here, because we're value driving between uh, two float3s. And now we want to set up the... Um, False value, so it's the central point of the door, which is 0, 0, 0. And then we want to set up the slide value such that it is the door all the way out of the out of the position. So if we go up to the door slide and we use the gizmo here, we can kind of figure it out. So just from experience, uh, probably really negative. So we'll try negative. Actually, it should be just negative of the, of the x value here. So what we want to do is tween it between um, where it currently is and its width slide it that way. So that'll be negative of its size, so negative 0.98. So I'm going to put that into the true value of the Boolean value driver here, so negative 0.98. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and reset its position again. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the uh, smooth value component. So that's on attach component transform drivers smooth value. And then smooth value th float 3. For smooth value th float 3, what we need to do is set the target value of the smooth value float 3, grab that and put it into the target value of the boolean value driver. 
Then we need to go up to the top of the box and grab position and put that into the value of the smooth value. So now when I change this boolean value driver from uh, false to true, you'll see that the door slides out of the way. Now it's sliding very quickly, so let's drop that speed down to two. Two's a sort of good number. And now you'll see that it slides a little bit more organically. There we go. I'm now going to go to the door position, which we created earlier, and hit up arrow again, because this will make the whole door assembly and duplicate this door. With this door, I'm going to go ahead and move it over such that there is uh, two spots there. There we go. So now we've got the left-hand side of the door and the right-hand side of the door. And I'm going to go into the door slide of this side of the door and change that negative 0.8 to positive 0.8 by removing the negative value here. There we go. So that's uh, removed it. Now we're at 0.98 on the Boolean value driver. So now when I hit true on this one, it will slide to the right. And when I hit positive on this one, it will slide to the left. Let's clear both of those. All that's left to do now is to hook up the uh, automatic part of it. And that's why we're using uh, Collider User Tracker. So to do this, what I'm going to do is create a collider, which when we enter that collider using Collider User Tracker, it will signal to the doors to slide open. And when we leave that Collider User Tracker volume, it will signal to the doors to close. So to do that, I'm going to go back up to the door um, position. Actually, let's use that because, uh, no, we'll use that. That's fine. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new object. I'm going to call this Collider. So I'll just rename it here to Collider. I'm going to go to Attach Component, Physics, Colliders, Box Collider. That will start by creating a collider of um, the default size of 111. That's fine. Let's adjust this so it's sort of in the middle. That will do. And then we're going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to change its size from 1 here to, let's try 2. 2 looks about right there. So I'll also change the Y to 2. Let's make that 2.5, just so it covers the, the whole range of the door. And then for the, the Z value, this is how close we want them to be to the door before it starts opening. One looks good, but I'm just going to push that a little bit to 1.5, just so that it's uh, there. With that added, go ahead and change the collider type to trigger. If you're interested in colliders, there's a collider video series that is linked in the video description from me as well. Let's go to attach component to attach the collider user tracker now, which is in physics, utility, Collider user tracker. And now you'll see that it starts, uh, it's, it's added. And if I approach and enter the box, oh, hold on. You'll see that the um, Collider user tracker activates. Now that I've walked up to that box, I'm actually going to go ahead and extend this box collider by just a little bit. So we'll go to 1.5 so it just feels a little bit more natural. There we go. So now what we need to do is um, signal to the Boolean value drivers that we've got that the Collider user tracker is seeing users. If I put this to the left here and I enter the Collider so that we're not seeing the, the, uh, the door in front of us here, you'll see that this is local user inside property is set to on. And this means like, hey, the, the user's inside the door. And then this is any user inside means someone is inside the door. And we're going to use the is any user inside because automatic doors open for every user if someone is walking out to it. It would be weird if only automatic doors opened only for the user walking towards them in reality. That would be kind of confusing. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need one more component, which is the uh, value multi-driver. I also have a video on that one. Sorry for all the links here, but this is, uh, you know, uh, what sometimes happens when you make a complete object, it links back to a bunch of other uh, videos that I've previously made. You can watch those if you're um, confused about any steps here. I do try and go over them, but the videos below will also, you know, provide more information about how all the components work. So to do that, we're going to go to Attach Component, Relations, Value Multi-Driver, Value Multi-Driver Bool. We're going to add two drives to this. We also need a value copy here. I always forget this part. So add attach component, transform drivers, value copy T, value copy bool. And then we need to set the uh, source property here to be is any user inside. So grab is any user inside and put it into source. And then the target needs to be the value of the value multi-driver. So we'll drop value into target. And now those two are synced up. For the drives here, just open up door slide in both uh, both sides of the door here. 
So I'm just grabbing and then pushing primary to get a second inspector for it. And I'm going to scroll down to the uh, Boolean value driver and grab state from both. So state, put it into the top drive. And state from the bottom one here. And put it into the bottom drive. And that should be good. So now when I approach the door, it opens. That distance, you know, is still too small. Uh, that's totally fine. I'm just going to go ahead and... Max out to two. I still feel like I'm, you know, going to walk into the door and it's going to kill me. There we go. That's a bit better. I might as well update the speed as well. Feel free to tweak these to your preference. I'm going to up the speed to four on both of these. You want it to look smooth. You know, imagine me with a shopping cart walking towards this door and then walking slap bang into it because it's too slow. There we go. That's more like it. So now I can close all these inspectors. Actually, I'm going to leave one open for just a moment, but you'll see that when I walk towards it, I can go through it and then it'll close again. The last remaining thing that you might want to do is make the whole thing movable. To do that, go back up to the top one that we created here, door position dash parent. Rename this to sliding doors. And then attach component, transform, interaction, grabbable. And there we go. Now I can grab it around and move it around. And again here, walk up to the door, it opens, walk through, and it closes. We have a deselect of all. We can take a look at the final effect. And we're done. I'll see you next time. If you've got any questions, leave them in the video comments, and I'll get back to you. Bye-bye. Oh, and thanks again, once again, to Shifty for this idea. Bye-bye.